This is KGW News at Noon. I think it's fantastic. It's a great place. The brand new Shunfat supermarket in Southeast Portland is officially open and the turnout, it was huge. This is a big deal for people living in the Lentz neighborhood. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. We will have more on that story coming up in just a moment. But first this afternoon, this next story really illustrates Portland's affordable housing crisis. A senior citizen says she is scared that she'll be homeless after getting an eviction notice at her apartment in Southeast. I said, what do you mean you get out? Where do you want me to go? That's Lynn Richardson. She lives at the Thomasville Apartments on Division. She says just days after her roommate died, she received a notice to get out within 24 hours. That's because her roommate's name was on the list, or on the lease rather, not hers. The legacy property management company told Richardson if she wanted to stay, she'd have to sign a new lease and her rent would go up from 800 to 1200 a month. Nobody wants to kick an elderly woman out on the street. That's not what this is about. I don't know this woman personally. She may be the most trustworthy person on the planet, but she might not be. That's the owner of the property management company. He says there must be some kind of miscommunication and will offer Richardson the option of renting month to month while she finds a new home. She's been working with a renter's advocate who did find her another apartment, but it won't be ready until July. Officials are trying to figure out what caused a deadly house fire in Salem this morning. These are images taken from the scene on Munker Street. Officials say the fire broke out just after five o'clock. They say a 45 year old man was rescued from the house and rushed to the hospital, but he died undergoing treatment. People are planning to show their support at a weekend rally for the Wilsonville teen and her mother found in Las Vegas yesterday. The girl has cancer and authorities say that the mother has refused to bring her in for medical care. Chris Willis is joining us now live in the newsroom. And Chris, we've been talking about this story for the last week or so, and people have opinions on both sides. Yeah, that's right, Brenda. Many viewers on both sides have been expressing their opinions. And tomorrow, people in support of the pair are planning a protest in downtown Portland. This afternoon, 13-year-old Kylie Dixon is in protective custody. Friends say her mom, Christina Dixon, was less than impressed with the care her daughter was getting in the hospital. She was treating Kylie's cancer with medicinal cannabis, among other things. The state intervened and officers tracked them down at a hotel in the Las Vegas area. We caught up with an attorney not connected to the case. She tells us she understands why the state got involved. When the mother is making decisions that professionals find to be lacking in reasonable judgment, then the court is asked to step in because we as a society have determined that parents don't always make the right choices. And so we want a stopgap to make sure that children have the best chance of getting to age 18 when they can refuse whatever medical care they'd like to. All right, and state lawmakers are following this case as well. We're told State Senator Kim Thatcher met with the Department of Human Services just yesterday. Again, a protest planned tomorrow at Pioneer Square starts at 1 p.m. We'll have the latest. Back to you, Brenda. Thank you, Chris. A lot of you are posting about this on Facebook. Ginny says, I'm so happy to hear that this little girl was found and there's now a chance she may survive. Rondi has a different take, though, saying nobody should be forced to undergo treatment and nobody should be forced into surgeries they don't want. We'll continue to follow this case to let you know what happens with Kylie and her mom. You can check for updates anytime on KGW.com or the news app. 
Well, it's 1203 and temps are a lot cooler across the Portland metro area today. Look at all that blue sky. That is pretty incredible. That is our sky cam in the Dells this afternoon. So Chris is here for Rod today, and I know you're looking ahead to the forecast for the Father's Day weekend. Because it's the weekend, a lot going on, of course, and we've got a beautiful weekend forecast. The cloud cover is going to dissipate here pretty quickly over the next hour or two in the metro area. We do have afternoon sunshine. We've got a cooler day today but a nice warm weekend ahead with highs in the 80s and uh, no hot weather in sight. I mean, like none in the foreseeable future. The next 14 to 16 days, there's nothing in our computer models that indicates 90 or 100 degree heat. So I'm happy to tell you that. Here's a quick look at your weekend forecast. Morning clouds, then sun both days. A little warmer, I think, tomorrow and Sunday with highs in the lower 80s. So a little warmer than where we are today. Cloud cover certainly keeping us a bit on the cool side today. This is really cool imagery. A really nice high resolution imagery from our new satellites and you can see here the mouth of the Columbia River and the extreme northern Willamette River Valley is still kind of shrouded in cloud cover, but those clouds are going to break up and once they do, we've got a really nice afternoon forecast. So I think we'll be back into the 70s by about six o'clock and what is this sunny nine o'clock? That must be a misprint, right? Brenda, the sunset tonight's 901. I just Woo. thought I'd let you know that. I know summer's <laughs> right around the corner. You bet it is. Thank you, Chris. All right, we want to get back to our top story now. The brand new Shunfat supermarket is open in southeast Portland. Christine Pitawanich is joining us live. I know you were there for the big grand opening, and this is an old Fred Meyer store. And Brenda, that old Fred Meyer is long gone. And in its place, gosh, look at this, a bustling brand new supermarket. It's here on the corner of Southeast 82nd and Foster. So many people are here. I can't even tell you how many. A lot of folks living in this area are just really excited, though, about this new addition to the neighborhood. It was an all-out celebration. All of this for the grand opening of the Shinfat Supermarket at Emmert International Marketplace. So many people came out. Just look at this crazy line. It's very long for sure. <laughs> I had to walk at 10, maybe I leave soon. <laughs> Fortunately, he didn't have to wait long. After the official ribbon cutting, it was all about getting through the doors. Shoppers were excited to say the least, rolling carts and grabbing baskets. A lot of people in the community come out to support, so I, I like it, and I'm going to support this store for sure. From fresh food to finger foods to fish balls, this store has got a lot of stuff. And this is fantastic because there's a lot of food that I'm looking forward to purchase. Like sometimes I have to go to California or Vancouver, BC to, to see them, and now they have them here, so that's great. And a lot of people is a bit of an understatement. It was a madhouse. All this is a bit overwhelming for Shopper Jason, but it's worth it. I think it's really great because it, there's so much diversity and different types of Asian cultures and everything looks so beautiful and fresh. Getting to the checkout was a little bit of a struggle too, but the big turnout unbelievable was just a huge reason to smile for the store manager who says people can expect quality service and very hard to find a store at this moment that doing the full service. You can cut your meat, people can clean your fish. You know, even fry your fish here. They do just about everything here. Well, shoppers tell me the store opening is a huge deal to the community because a large number of people living in the area are Asian. The store is open from 8 to 10 p.m. every single day. And if you were headed out here today, just know <laughs> it's a little crazy out here. <laughs> Back to you. It certainly looks like it. All right. Thank you so much, Christine. A quick reminder, the Portland Pride Festival kicks off tomorrow. You are looking live at the waterfront from our Rose City Sky Cam. There will be vendor booths all along the river and performances from LGBTQ artists. The festival runs from noon to 8 on Saturday and 11.30 to 6 on Sunday. Sunday's big parade begins at 11 in the morning on West Burnside and Northwest Park Avenue. Well, we are hearing from the new coach of Beavers Baseball, Mitch Canham, spoke at a press conference just a few hours ago. Orlando Sanchez is in Corvallis with an update. It's a new era of baseball here in Corvallis. Oregon State choosing to go outside its current coaching staff to find its next head coach. But there will be a familiar face leading the Beavers next season. 
Today, OSU formally introduced Mitch Canham as head coach. He's 34 years old from Richland, Washington, and he's a beaver playing catcher during the Beavs' run to back-to-back -to -back national championships. After his playing days were over, Canham has been a rising star in the coaching world, most recently as a manager for the Seattle Mariners' AA affiliate in Arkansas. But there was only one place that could take him away from that job, and it's here in Corvallis. This is the only job I've, I've ever really dreamt of. When I was fortunate enough to interview with the Mariners, I got to sit down and I said, I'm all in on this job. I was born and raised in the Northwest. This is home. I'm never going to leave it, I tell you, except if I get one call. And there's only one other job in the world that means more to me, and that's this one. Now the big question moving forward is what will the coaching staff look like beyond Canham? He's got some decisions to make and says he'll have those conversations with Nate Yeski and Pat Bailey moving forward. Reporting from Corvallis, Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports.